Welcome to the second video in the Real Analysis course. Here we're talking about boundedness and the supremum. You probably already have an idea of what it means to be bounded. It's something you can't exceed. Let's again talk about it in the mathematical sense. Let's, let's let capital A be a subset of a set S. And here I'm letting S be an ordered set. We talked about what orderedness was in the last video. So S is ordered, and now we're gonna talk about being bounded above and an upper bound. Here's the first one. If there exists some element, I'll call it B for bound, some B in S such that, and I'm using ST for such that, such that little a is less than or equal to b for every single element a in that subset a. Basically, anything you pull out of capital A, any element is less than or equal to this other element. Well, then we'll say, then a is bounded above, which makes sense. Right? If, if nothing from a can exceed little b, well, then it's bounded. That's what it means. And we can call, call this little b an upper bound, bounded from above. So very intuitive. This is just what it means mathematically. And we should see a very similar thing for a lower bound and being bounded below. I'll just be a little redundant with my notation. If there exists some b in s, such that a is greater than or equal to b for any little a in a, well then you guessed it, then a is bounded below. Right? It can't exceed in the opposite direction. Is bounded below, bounded below, and we'll call b be a lower bound exactly what you would expect here. Now there are two very special upper and lower bounds called the least upper bound, we'll call that the supremum, and the greatest lower bound, sometimes we'll call that the infimum. So it works like this. If there exists some B, I'll call it B star, because it's so special. Some B star, which this is an upper bound. This is an upper bound for A. So just like definition one. So it is definition one. But B star is less than or equal to B, where B is any upper bound. for A. It's just, it's just another upper bound. So in other words, these are all upper bounds, but B star here is less than or equal to any other upper bound. Well, then we'll call this the supremum, or also known as the least upper bound. I'll say it here, supremum. And Sometimes we'll use this notation, simply SUP, abbreviating supremum. I would say that the supremum of A is this B star. And we have the exact same idea here, exact same idea for the greatest lower bound. So we'll say if there exists some, I, I won't say here, but this is a lower bound very similar, this is a lower bound for A. But we have the opposite that B star in this case, and I know I'm being redundant with my notation, but B star is greater than or equal to B, where B is any lower bound, any lower bound of A. Well, then we'll call B star 
the greatest lower bound, or the infimum. And again, sometimes we'll write it like this. We'll write inf, inf, the infimum of A is B star. So these ideas will become important later. In the next video, we'll talk about the completeness property.